guys. Well, welcome, friends. Online friends, welcome, welcome. Um, we're going to be doing a 60-minute power flow yoga class today. So come on up to standing, and you can have your feet on parallel uh, at hip bone distance, or if you want, you can bring your big toes together and put a little space back between your heels. Either way is great. And then close your eyes, and on an inhale, just bring your shoulder heads high up in space towards your ears. And as you exhale, just roll your shoulders down away from the ears on the back. <sighs> Let's do that again. So inhale to bring your shoulder heads high up in space. Breathe in. Exhale, roll them down away from the ears on the back. <sighs> Last time. Inhale, lift your shoulders up nice and tall. Exhale, release them down. <sighs> and just relax your arms. Feel nice and tall and spread out into all corners of your feet. And then bring your air all the way down to empty. <sighs> Breathe into your low belly for one, two, three, and hold. Breathe into your mid-abdomen, one, two, three, and hold. Feel all the way up to the chest, all the way to the shoulders. Once you've got the full breath, just relax. And then like you were quieting a child on your exhale, start your ujjayi breathing. So begin those inhales through your nose like you're sipping the air in through a straw. Exhales out your nose like you're fogging up a mirror. You can think about it. It's, it's, it feels like you're closing the back of your throat as you engage this breath. And it's that full belly breath. It's a diaphragm breath. So it's a much larger breath than we take. And it's a breath where we are focused on every part of it. And as we put our focus and we put our attention just into our breathing, we get to step out of fixing, solving, changing, planning, worrying, the future, the past. And we start to tap into the present, what's happening right here, right now. And I just love that intention with this practice of stepping into our bodies stepping into the present moment, stepping into the room. So take what works for me, leave the rest behind, and just allow your breath to be your guide for your practice. Let's bring the eyes open to a soft gaze up front. And on your inhale, just lengthen and lift your arms up nice and tall in space. And on the exhale, hinge out from your hips and take your swan dive all the way down into a forward fold. Release your head at the bottom and then inhale halfway up, pressing to your shins or your thighs, bringing your spine parallel, toning your shoulder blades in, and then refolding when you're ready. If your feet are not out at hip bone distance, just take them to hip bone distance. And you could take a ragdoll frame, opposite hand, opposite elbow, or bicep as you gently sway side to side. You also could interlace the hands behind the base of the skull let the elbows open up wide, and then similar thing where you're just letting it sway side to side or lightly rock back and forth. And we want to check in that the weight of the head is totally released out here. And you're just creating that length, just flowing down from the hips through your spine. And on those exhales, feeling that extra little bit of release that comes in. Excellent, friends. So just release your arms and then take your left fingertips or your fist or your palm and press the left hand down and then we're going to bend deep in the left knee and then you'll reach your right arm up in space, twisting open. And as you bend into your left knee, you're lengthening the back of your right leg. So you're really pushing down into that right heel. And you should get a nice stretch along the outside of your right leg all the way up into your hip. Let's take one more breath on that. And then when your exhale comes, you can fold and just root your right fingertips, your fist, or your palm to the ground. And then bend into your right leg. Reach your left arm up nice and tall so your gaze goes to the left. And as you're bending in your right knee, lengthen out through that left leg. Press down through your heel. Beautiful breathing. Whenever your next exhale comes, you can just fold it forward. And then 
will step back and come into a tabletop position, just bringing your knees down to the ground. I'm a big fan of warming the wrists up in our hands so you can turn the insides of your wrists forward, your thumbs to the side of the room, your fingers back. You could just shift kind of side to side or back and forth, or my favorite is where we lean back and peel the hands off the mat back to your fingertips and then just slowly roll back forward until the heels of the palms land back down. And whatever you're working with, you can just weave your breath in, just however your breath makes the most sense to you here. Just keep those inhales, keep those exhales going through the body. And then press the back of your hands down to the ground when you're ready. Fingers can face towards one another or towards the back of the room. Same thing, just kind of massaging. Maybe you're doing that roll back to your fingernails, bringing the hands off the mat and back forward, whatever feels best to you here. And then hero's pose is a nice pose to come to for a moment where we take the tops of the feet to the ground, sit bones back to your heels, knees are in towards one another, and then just circle out through your wrists, move through your fingers. And then while we are in hero's pose, you can also do this on your sit bones as well. Just bring your left hand either to your thigh or to the ground, and take your right hand to the top left side of your head, and just gently pull your right ear towards your right shoulder, lengthening the left side of your neck. And you could walk your fingertips forward to your forehead, lifting up your chin. You could also walk your fingertips backwards towards the base of the skull, letting the chin dip forward. And you're just finding the edges of the left side of your neck to breathe into here. And then the right fingertips can press into the temple on the right side of the head, bring your head up to center, and then we'll switch things out so you can root those right fingertips down to the ground. Left hand can grab the left side of your head and just lengthen the right side of your neck. Feel free to work with the chin lifting up, fingertips more to your forehead, or the chin coming down, fingers more towards the base of the skull, feeling into the edges, staying with the breath. And we can use the breath just to process tension. That can be tension stored up physically. That can also just be emotional tension stored up as well. We all know the power of just a deep exhale. Awesome, friends. So the fingertips of the, the left hand can press into the left temple. Bring your head up to center. Any additional movement you need here. And then we're just going to meet up in our plank pose. So step the toes to the back of your mats. Find the hips right on level with your shoulders. And in your plank, we can give a little forward and backward movement if you want. Just kind of rocking on the toes, feeling into the muscles, holding us up here. And then pause when you're ready, holding your shoulders up above your hands. Biceps are toning in towards center line. Hips are on level with your shoulders. We'll take a breath at the top. And then slowly on your exhale, hinge forward and just lower all the way down to your belly. Tops of your feet to the ground. Slide your palms a little lower down the mat. And then low cobra where we lift the chest off the ground and where we create that length through the back of the neck. So chin is slightly back to throat here. And there's little to no weight in your hands to the point that I, I love doing this where you just lift your hands just slightly off the mat. And then right when I do that automatically, I want to go into locust pose. So let's go there. Just reach your arms back in space. Pull your thighs up off the ground. Elbows can bend a little bit and lift. And then those shoulder blades are coming in towards one another behind you. Pretend there's a pencil between your shoulder blades and you're holding it into place. Nice back strengthening pose. Next exhale, just release down. And to get to down dog, you can lift through tabletop or lift through your plank, shifting your hips back and up in space. And then however you like to warm up your down dog, you can just take those slow steps into one heel at a time, just the walking out. We want the weight of the head to relax so the gaze is going backwards. And then feel spread out into your hands, into your fingertips, into the circle of the palm, biceps toning into center line. Hips pulling back up nice and tall in space. Eventually, heels equally pulling down towards the ground behind you. And 
Then when you're ready, inhale your right leg back and up, three-legged downward facing dog. Press through your heel, press through the ball of the foot. The front of your right leg is pointing down, maybe slightly back. And then with your left hip, rather than feeling like you're sinking down into it, as you're, you're starting to reach that left hip slightly up and back as well to help that right leg lift in space. Breathe into it, friends. And on an exhale, just draw your right knee over to your left elbow or over to your left tricep. And hug that knee in nice and close. Stay with the breath. Inhale, reaches us back up, three-legged down dog. And on the exhale, just draw your knee over to your right elbow, over to your right tricep, and just hold in. Watch that the hips aren't sinking here. We're still kind of lifting them up. This is like a plank. Nice work. Inhale, reach back up, three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, come up into your low lunge position. So just work your right foot up in between your hands. Once you've got the, the foot up between your hands, knee over your heel, you can use your, your fist or your palm or even your fingertips. Just press the left hand underneath your left shoulder and then take a twist. Start to reach your right arm up tall in space. You're opening the full wingspan here. And I want you to start to increase the strength in your legs. So feel your thighs toning in towards one another, stabilizing. Okay, if you're on your fist, move to all five fingertips of the left hand. Rooting to the ground, staying with the breathing, and then just the middle fingertip of the left hand. If you want, try the hover game where you're just hovering the left hand just right off the ground here. And then eventually, we'll tilt up into a twisted lunge. This is a vertical twisting lunge. So right arm's all the way back behind you, left arm is forward, gaze can even go back uh, to the back of the room or just is looking over to the right. You might feel like you're rolling onto the outside edge of your right foot, so give that big right toe a press down into the ground. Feel your knees stabilized above your heel, your thighs toning in. Spine is straight up in space and we're staying with that breath. So your next round of breath, you're going to go all the way to empty, twisting down, and then your inhale is just your high crescent lunge. Just bring your arms up forward in space. Play with your balance. Right knee bent at 90. Awesome. And that back left heel, just feel it pulling forward in space. And your left thigh is pulling forward. Your right thigh is pulling back to meet it. Arms up nice and tall here. And you can feel those shoulder heads just releasing down away from your ears on your back. From here, we'll take beggar's bowl. So your back knee hovers your spine is straight up in space, and then like you're holding up this heavy bowl, we've got the arms up tall. And if we had something, if we had something we were really holding up, we would need to open through the chest here and then feel those shoulders behind us helping to lift that heavy bowl up so we're not caving in with it, that we're supporting the length in the spine. Beautiful breathing. Next inhale is chair, so left foot steps up to meet the right, and it's your choice. I'm going to go big toes together, knees together, thighs together. You can also just keep everything at hip bone distance if you want. Awesome. So sit bones are reaching back in space. We're dropping the back, and then we're fired up around our knees. We're fired up all the way to our glutes. So we did that vertical twist in our lunge. Let's try it in our chair. Right arm behind you, left arm forward. You can leave the heels down. Option also to lift your heels up off the ground. And if your knees start to swivel over to the side, try to keep the knees flush up towards the front of the room as we work with this. Drop your right heel if it's lifted. Inhale, arms and left knee up, one-legged mountain. So let's play with our balance here. And imagine you had both feet pressing to the ground, and you're just extending up through the fingertips. Focus your gaze out in front of you on an object that's not moving. We'll work into figure four. So just cross the left ankle over the top of your right thigh and then come into a one-legged chair 
Hands can be the heart center, that's fantastic. You could also do one hand to knee and one hand to heel as well. And then as you're lowering the sit bones back, going into that chair position, just stay playful with the balance here. Your left toes could flex back towards your left shin. Your left knee could flex slightly down so you feel that hip opener on the left side. We rise back up one-legged mountain, and then we add, as we're lifting up through the left eye, we're going to add an extension forward through the left foot as you reach up through your arms here. And don't focus on the left leg necessarily going straight. Find first that lift up and then that press forward as you lift. And we're trying not to lean back. So there's more pressure right now in the ball of the right foot, like you're pushing forward through the left leg. On an exhale, swim back into a low lunge position, bringing the hands to frame the right foot, ball of the left foot to the ground behind us. And then we'll go to a plank, stepping right foot to meet the left. Your choice from here, how you want to get to down dog. So you could go directly to down dog. You could take Chaturanga Dandasana halfway down. You could take low cobra or upward facing dog. Tops of the feet to the ground, hips off the mat. Letting those shoulders tone in, lifting up through chest. And then eventually we make our way back into our down dog. Again, let the weight of your head release in your down dog. Spread out into the hands, into the fingers. Hands slightly wider than shoulders, feet right at hip bone distance. Left leg pulls up on your inhale, three-legged down dog. Awesome. Press through your heel, press through the ball of the foot. Think about the front of your left leg is pointing down and back. So there might be a tendency that the, in, the front of your left leg starts to point out to the left, and you can just fix that. And then rather than sinking into your right hip, your right hip's also lifting up on level helping to lift the left leg tall. Next exhale, friends, bring the left knee to your right elbow, right tricep. Stay nice and strong, holding up here. Just a three-legged plank, hands right underneath your shoulders. We'll inhale to take your left leg back up, three-legged dog, and on your exhale, bring your knee to your left elbow or a tricep. And same thing, lifting up high, watching the hips aren't sinking, Staying strong through your arms, strong through the core. Excellent. Inhale, takes the left leg back and up. And then our low lunge on that exhale. Work your foot up between your hands. Find your knee right over your heel. And then we're leaving the right hand to the ground, whether, you, whether you're using fingertips, fist, palm, or even a block. And then we'll start to reach the left arm up nice and tall in space. So take your twist. When the exhales come, that's when your body has the ability just to get a little bit deeper into it. Start to work to the five fingertips of the right hand. Feel your thighs toning to center line, stabilizing your body. Let's go to the middle fingertip on the right hand if you like. Maybe try the hover game, just holding the right fingertips just right above the ground. And then we're going to come all the way up. Vertical twisting lunge. Left arm behind us, right arm forward. Spine is straight up in space, thighs are toning to center line. And again, you might feel kind of just a roll a little bit onto the outside edge of the left foot and just feel that big left toe rooted to the ground. Get all the way to the end of your breath. And then inhale brings us to our high crescent lunge facing up and forward in space. Awesome. Feel that back heel drawing forward on the ball of the right foot. Left thigh meeting the right. So you've got that stabilization below you, and you're lifting up to the chest, sending the gaze forward. Breathe into that high crescent. When your exhale comes, our turbo lunge. So the back knee just hovers off the ground. This is beggar's bowl. Chest remains lifted, holding out through that bowl with your hands using your breath to work through the sensation we're creating. And then we step up to chair on an inhale. So again, you can do your feet at hip bone distance, where I'm going to bring my big toes, knees, ankle bones, thighs to all press in its center. 
and give a little more stabilizing. Sit bones drop nice and low into that squat. And as you're lowering into the squat, lower into the strength of your legs, lower into the strength of your glutes. So you've got all that support that you're sitting back into, the structure. For your vertical twist, as you reach your left hand behind you, send your right arm forward, you can lift the heels if you want. And again, your right knee will want to twist a little bit forward as you go to the left. So you're just correcting that if you need to, lining the knees up to face the front of the room, square up to the front of the room. This time we drop the left heel, bring arms and right knee up into your one-legged mountain. Feel that right knee bent, feel the big left toe pressing to the ground. That's one that helps me to feel the big left toe gripping to the ground. Get that full lift all the way up through your arms. Beautiful, breathe in, and then we'll take our figure four. So right ankle going over the top of your left knee, over the top of your left thigh. Hands are right in towards heart center, or we can do one hand to knee, one hand to heel. And as you sit into this one-legged chair, again, fire up into that left leg. Fire up into that left glute. Right toes could flex a little bit towards your shin, so the right knee can be flexing down a little bit in space. That's the hip opener part of this. And then when you're ready, just bring it back up one-legged mountain. We can extend the right leg forward if you want, or just leave the right knee bent. Feel that press forward through your body, so you're pressing off the big left toe, and it's rather than leaning back that we've got that strength coming from our center going out in front of us. One more inhale lifts, and then swim back to your low lunge on your exhale, so both hands frame your left foot, ball the right foot to the ground behind you. Step back to your plank, and then choose your own adventure to downward facing dog whether you're going directly, whether you're lowering halfway, whether you've got a low cobra or an upward facing dog. Okay, and then we're gonna take this one breath to movement. So just do your best with this, friends. Have fun with it. On an inhale, right leg pulls back up, three-legged down dog. And as you exhale, bring the knee over to your left elbow, your left tricep. Inhale, reach back up, three-legged down dog. Exhale, knee to right elbow or tricep. Inhale, reach back up, three-legged dog. Exhale is low lunge. So leave your left hand out of your shoulder. Inhale, your right arm lifts up in space. And as you exhale, you tilt upright into that vertical twisting lunge. Then we inhale, high crescent lunge, arms come forward and up. And as you exhale, beggar's bowl, back knee hovers, arms are forward. Inhale, chair, left foot meets the right. And exhale, vertical twisting chair to the right. Right hand behind you, left arm forward. Maybe the heels lift. Plant your right heel, inhale, arms and left knee, one-legged mountain. And exhale, figure four, left ankle over right thigh. Inhale, back to one-legged mountain. You could extend your left leg forward. And then exhale, swim it to low lunge. Step back to plank. We'll lower halfway down or whatever variation of this vinyasa, this flow you're taking, eventually just meeting our way back into downward facing dog. Grab a couple rounds of breath and then we'll get into the other side. Inhale, reaches left leg back up, three-legged down dog. Exhale, knee to right elbow or tricep. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, knee left elbow or tricep. Inhale, back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge. So leave the right hand under your shoulder. Inhale, left arm reaches up in space. And as you exhale, just tilt upright, vertical twisting lunge. Inhale takes you into your high crescent, arms forward and up. And exhale to your beggar's bowl, back knee hovers. Inhale, chair, right foot meets the left. And then exhale, vertical twisting chair, left arm behind you, right arm forward. Lower your left heel, inhale, arms and right knee, one-legged mountain. And exhale, figure four, right ankle over your left thigh. Find the strength around it. Inhale, back up one-legged mountain. Feel free to extend your right leg forward. And then swim back to your low lunge. Step back to plank and your choice of how we get to down dog.
In that down dog, release your air all the way out to empty. <sighs> Inhale slowly to fill up. And exhale side out. <sighs> awesome, find child's pose. So from your tabletop, knees out wide towards the edges of your mats. Tops of the feet to the ground, big toes together. Sit bones lower to the heels. Arms are out in front of you, weight of the forehead is released. This can be a really beautiful time to surrender the weight of your body to the ground. And just feel the rise and fall of the breath inside of the pose. If you would like more activity inside of it, just try pressing forward into your hands, into your fingertips. You might even lift your elbows off the ground and be on your fingertips. And as you're pressing forward, you'll be pressing your sit bones closer back to the heels. And just find that breath. Lovely friends. You can bring yourself up to your tabletop and then just come to your sit bones. This is a nice time if you want to grab a drink of water, you can grab a drink of water. And then we're going to do some work on our back, some core work. And today for the core work, we're going to be working with the left side of our body and the and center and then the right side of our body. And we'll do this in a few different positions. So the first one we're going to get into is where our legs are straight up. And typically in this one, I would call this side to sides where you're equally reaching forward through left or right. But we're just going to isolate. So we're going to begin just by going forward through left, back to center, forward through left. Then we'll do toe touches, and then we'll do the right. So on your mark, get set. <laughs> when you're ready, just start reaching forward through your left arm and come back to center. And as always with these guys, if you need support for your neck, it's not a problem. You can do one hand behind the base of your skull. And sometimes all you need is just like a finger back there and then your head just feels supported and you don't get that strain that sometimes you can feel on these. Okay, perfect. So now start going straight up in space, both arms right at center. The exhale can lift you up. The inhale can bring you back down. All right, let's take the right side. So just reaching forward through your right arm, coming back to center. Stay with your breath. You can use ujjayi breathing or just breathe in and out through your mouth when you do this core work. Almost there. And we'll take Supta Baddha Konasana as a rest. So recline cobblers, recline bound angle, Bottoms of the feet together, knees are wide. And then another moment, kind of like child's pose, right, where you can just surrender the body weight here. And these times when we get these poses where we're surrendering the body weight, we're releasing the body weight, you just feel the breath moving the pose. Sometimes sending a sigh out the mouth can help with that whole process of just releasing and relaxing. <sighs> okay, so for the next one, the, the, the normal one it was what I call in, up, and down. So your legs are lifted out in front of you, the feet are together. And then what it would be with both legs together is knees come in, and then you exhale legs up and come down. But we're going to isolate first. So the right leg will stay, and you're just going to do the motion with your left leg. 
So ready, set, and go for it. So inhale your left knee in, exhale, reaches straight up and lowers back to the right. Okay, next time your legs meet up, do both legs together. So this is our center. Okay, when your legs come back in front of you, just do the right. Leave the left where it is. Last few. You got it. Last two. Last one. Awesome. Just release to maybe a full morning stretch. Legs out in front of you. Arms all the way back behind you. Just rolling out through your ankles. Rolling out through your wrists. Moving into your fingers. Moving into your toes. Perfect, and then bring your knees to your chest, grab onto your hamstrings, and we'll do a couple rocks back and forth that bring us up to our sit bones and then take us back to the base of the skull. And then we'll meet up on our sit bones, and the next one we're gonna do is from boat pose. So the, the movement we're taking is gonna be rows. So all we're doing is we're rowing to one side to begin with, and then the center one is going to be where you're opening up to boat and then you're bringing your knees and your arms back in and then we'll go to the other side. So we'll start with the left side. So cross your ankles, lengthen through your spine, hug your shoulders in, and then when you're ready, just begin it. So you're just rowing, twisting over to the left and then bringing yourself back to center. Weaving your breath in however it makes the most sense to you. Okay, as you come to center, you start to find those openings and then those closings inside of our boat. And when you're opening, that's more of our traditional boat pose where we really got the length in the spine. When you're closing, we round a little bit through the back. And then the next time you come in, just cross and we'll begin the twist opening towards the right. Use your breath, weave it in. Almost there. Last couple. Perfect, friends. So you can come forward, and we can find Sphinx Pose. So just come forward through your tabletop. Bring your hips all the way to the ground. Tops of the feet are resting. Press into your forearms. Lift up through your chest. You can leave your head facing forward. Or I love doing some twists in the neck here. So if you'd like to, just twist your gaze over your left shoulder. If you're over your left shoulder when you're ready, just twist over your right. As the head comes uh, back to forward, leave it upright or maybe a couple rounds of breath, letting the weight of it come down as your shoulders lift up so you've got some cat in your upper spine. And then let's take some, uh, some breaths in beach pose. So just like you're laying out at the beach, you can relax your head down, your arms down, and then leave your feet down to the ground or like I'm doing, you can pick your feet up in space and you're just doing circles with your knees and circles with your ankles. And this can feel awesome for the low back as well as the knee joints, as well as the ankles and the feet. Beautiful, and then we're gonna meet back up in downward facing dog. So when you're ready, you move through either your plank or you move through your tabletop. Pull the hips back up tall in space, tone the biceps in. Feel that draw down through your heels. On an inhale, take your right leg back up nice and tall. 
And if you'd like, you can open your hip and bend your knee. So drape your toes down over to the left as your knee just lifts up in space. Stay with the breath. Just creating this giant scorpion tail here. Excellent. Um, we'll step the foot up to the outside of your right hand when you're ready. And we can create lunar, runner's lunge. And you've got options. So you could do this with your back knee lifted or you can drop your back knee down to the ground. Uh, probably back your left knee up a little bit towards the back of your mat. And then stay on your hands or you can bring your forearms down to the ground. You can bring your forearms down to a block. You could even take the edge of your water bottle down and put your, fo your forearms onto the water bottle as well. And we want to just feel that the right foot is rooted down to the ground, all corners of the right foot. There could be a tendency to feel like you're dipping down, falling into the left hip. So you can actively let that left hip pull a little bit up and back. Think about squaring your hips towards the ground, squaring your hips towards the front of the room. And just that nice deep breathing here. Okay, friends, meet up in a low lunge position. So heel toe your right foot more back into the center of the mat. Lift the back knee off the ground. And then for standing splits, you just take your fingertips out in front of you. And this is a forward fold on one leg. So standing forward fold on one leg. So we want the head released. The gaze is behind you. Back left leg is lifting up as you're pressing into your right foot. And then you're rooting into your fingertips, your fists, or even your palms. And I like to think like you're doing a handstand almost, right? That you're pressing into the ground to press that back left leg up in space. Awesome. Find your breath. Find the lift. Okay, and then bring your left knee to touch your right knee. So your thighs are pressing together. And then pull your left heel to your left sit bone and start to come into a one-legged chair on your right leg. So this one is, uh, I heard this called praying monkey. So we're in a one-legged chair on the right leg. Your knees, your thighs are all pressed to center, and then that back left heel is pulling up to your left sit bone, and your left toes are going down, and hands are right into your chest. And we're using that press into center to find the stabilization on that one leg. Rise up into your one-legged mountain. And then we're going to come back into a pose we hit in our flow, our figure four, so your left ankle over your right thigh. But this time we're going to throw in some options. So as you take that left ankle over your right thigh and you come into your one-legged chair, your figure four, we can start to play with a fold forward. So you can start to bring your fingertips down to the ground. And you can bend that standing right leg as you need to if you're playing with this fold. You could also have a block, say, on like level two or level one that both hands are going into. And then if you know the arm balance here and you're feeling like doing an arm balance today, what we're going to end up using are the triceps as a platform for the left shin. And you need to slide the left foot a little bit over to the right, and then your right tricep is going to go right underneath your left ankle, and your left toes will grip around the bicep. And then your left tricep goes underneath your left knee. And the way that it ends up looking is you take your weight down onto your palms, and then we rock it forward. And you can do the complete extension of your right leg back and up if you want. Just some play time, just some play time. Nice, let's just start to slowly unwind back up into that one-legged mountain. So just lifting your left knee back up in space. 
Do your swim all the way back into your low lunge. We've already done this a couple of times. And then for pigeon, walk the right foot over the left side of your mat. Lower your knee over to the right. You'll slide your left leg back a little bit in space. We can lift up into our fingertips for a moment as we line up the legs and the hips. And then eventually, forearms to the ground, weight of your forehead down into your hands. You're also welcome to take this on your sit bones in double pigeon or on your back in reclined pigeon as well. Front of the left leg is pointing down to the ground. That will help you from rolling onto one of your sides, feeling the hips uh, facing down towards the earth, the front of the hips. And then this is a great pose where you release the weight of the head. Release the weight of your arms. Release the weight of your torso. And you get that opportunity just to do some deep breath work, some deep stretching. Nice, let's find that last round of breath here. And then just press into your hands, tuck those back left toes. Right leg can lift back up into our three-legged down dog and just give it some movement here. Maybe pumping it to the side or lengthening it and bringing it back down to the ground. And then just hold that full downward facing dog, both feet connected to the ground. Once you've got it, inhale your left leg back and up, three-legged down dog. And then create the scorpion tail on this side. So we let the toes drape down over to the right as the knee lifts up. Watch that you're not sinking down into your right shoulder. And watch that your right heel isn't twisting over to the side of the room. On an exhale for runner's lunge, left foot to the outside of your left hand. You can keep the back knee lifted if you want or the back knee touches down to the ground. Both hands are on the inside of the left foot and we're staying on the hands or you're starting to work down to the forearms closer to the ground, maybe to the ground or maybe to a prop. Could even be a folded up sweatshirt or something that gives you a little bit of a lift here. Right knee might need to back up a little bit in space to feel that stretch. You could even slightly turn the left toes off the left side of the mat a little bit to open the inside of the left foot to face forward. And then just feel that, that bit of activity in your hips where you're not just sinking down into your right hip, but where you feel it lifting up and back. So I always like to say like you're placing your hips into the pose versus letting them just sink into it. Awesome with that breathing. From your runner's lunge, just taking a regular low lunge position. So coming up to the hands, walking the left foot in a little bit. Back right knee lifts off the ground, and then you're going to your standing splits. So take the weight to your fingertips, your fists, or your palms. Press into that left leg. Release the weight of the head to look back behind you. Fantastic. And feel that press through the arms. And it's really, if you're pressing into the ground, you're using the arm strength, but you're in your core muscles at that point as you're pressing down. It's the same thing we get in the plank or the same thing we bring into a downward facing dog, that press. Lift up tall through the right leg. 
And then when you're ready, you're going to start to bring your right knee and it's going to touch your left knee. So your thighs are together. Your knees are together. Start to bend the right knee so your heel is pulling to your sit bone. And then we stand up on the left leg into a one-legged chair, that praying monkey. Knees are connected. Thighs are connected. (sighs) Hands are right at your heart center. Right heel pulls up to your right sit bone and we can flex the right toes down towards the ground. Feel the strength in that left leg. Last round of breath here. And then rise up into your one-legged mountain. Okay, so we're going to do some more playtime in that figure four. So sending the right ankle over the top of your left thigh, over the top of your left knee. And then you could do the whole thing upright if you want, or we were playing with that fold forward. So bringing the fingertips to your block or to the floor. And again, you can bend into that standing right leg as you need to. You could even bend a, a ton, get the fingertips down, and then start to re-extend through that standing left leg. So if you're playing with that arm balance, this time we are placing the right shin, right ankle, onto the triceps. So your right ankle will go over the left triceps. So slide your right foot a little bit to the left. And then you're going to take the knee onto the right tricep and then the ankle onto the left tricep. And your toes can wrap around that bicep. And you can you know, extend the left leg back and up if you want or leave it connected. So just our play time. Last couple rounds of breath. Nice, so rise back up when you're ready. We're just coming up to our one-legged mountain, so lifting arms and left knee up, and then swimming it back into your low lunge position. Once you land, start to walk the right foot over to the left side of your mat. Lower the knee over to the side, or that left leg. Lift up tall through your chest. You can root to your fingertips. Right leg is directly back behind us. And then you just lower it down onto your forearms when you're ready. You can have the top of your left foot or the side of your left foot to the ground. And you can make adjustments. You can bring your shin closer up to the top of your mat for more intensity or pull it slightly back for less intensity. We want to find that Goldilocks level of sensation to practice with, so not too much, not too little. We're seeking to release the weight of the cranium, releasing the weight of the upper body. Using those inhales, using those exhales. Take that last round of breath here. And then you can make your way into three-legged down dog with left leg lifted and use that three-legged down dog to bring some movement, some blood flow back and in. Eventually, downward facing dog And on an exhale, just releasing down to your knees, bringing your sit bones to the ground, and then taking your feet all the way up to the top of your mats. You can slide your hips up a little bit in space, plant your feet down, your knees are pointed up, 
extend your arms forward, and then just use your core strength and vertebrae by vertebrae lower down. Your head is the very last thing to tap down. When it does, step your heels in closer where they're underneath your knees. Root into your triceps, lift your hips up in space, relax the weight of the head, we're in bridge pose. Feel the big toes pressing down into the mat. Hips nice and active, lifting in space. And that full breath. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Just roll your hips to the ground. And then when they tap down, walk your feet out a little bit wider and let your knees fall in towards one another. And as your knees fall into center, you're getting this nice stretch on the outside of the legs. And another thing that can feel great is where maybe you let your left knee come closer down to the ground and then your right knee opens up a little bit to the side. And then you just switch out your knees one at a time. So one presses closer to the ground Increasing that stretch on outside of leg, outside of hip. And then bring your right knee into your right shoulder. Just extend your left leg flat out in front of you. And as you hug that knee up into your shoulder, we're just going to set up a twist here. So your left hand grabs onto the outside of the knee or thigh, pulls down to the left. You roll onto the outside edge of your left hip, and then reach and extend your right arm out to the side and take your gaze over your fingertips. You can always add extension to your left leg if you want. Hook onto the outside of the leg or outside of the foot as well. Come out of the twist, just bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your knees and give yourself a nice little rock. And then we can switch that out with your right leg going all the way flat out in front of you, just hugging your left knee up into your left shoulder. And then when you're ready, let the right hand grab that left knee and pull down over to the right onto the outside edge of your right hip. Reach and extend your left arm out to the left. Take your gaze out across your left fingertips. Feel that left shoulder just relaxing towards the earth. If there was a variation you did on the other side, and obviously bring that into play on this side as we just breathe. As you come out of this twist and you're on your back, you can just bring your knees in and go side to side. You could also hook up into happy baby, peace sign fingers to the big toes or hands to the edges of the feet. Knees are wide and then we've got the ankles stacked above the knees so the bottoms of the feet are shining up in space. Your head's relaxed and you're just taking that rock out on your back.
and then start to move into your final resting pose, your corpse posture, Shavasana. So if you need a drink of water, this is a good time to grab a drink of water, or if you need something to cover your eyes with, or whatever it is, we just want to create that comfort in the body. And then allowing the weight of the body to relax, to release. The weight of your hands, of your feet. Feeling your arms heavy, your legs heavy. Weight of the head relax, your facial muscles releasing. So bring some life to your body. You can move your fingers, you can move your toes. And then slowly reach your arms all the way back overhead behind you. So reaching from the front of the room to the back. And just roll the weight of your body onto your side into a fetal position. Curling up. Deepening the breath. And then like we were getting ready to do a seated meditation, you can bring yourself up to your sit bones. If there is another pose you want to end class with, please feel free to grab it. If you're finding that seated posture, we want to shift the weight of our body onto the front edge of the sit bones so you can pull the flesh away or take a couple steps back. And then from there, just like at the beginning of class, use an inhale to bring your shoulder heads high up towards your ears, lengthening your spine. And on your exhale, just roll your shoulder heads down away from the ears on the back. Relax the weight of the arms.
It's been my pleasure to lead you through your yoga practice today. Thank you so much for showing up for yourselves on your mats. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste.